Hey guys, this is the Elephant. Um, my E flat tuba had a fourth valve slide that's about an inch too long if it were all the way in. And uh, I have made this is the original here. Make sure you're getting that in the film. Okay. The original here, you can see that it was extending this far out of the horn, went to the crook and back down, and that's the inner leg. And I shortened it by two inches, which ought to give me an in tune low B flat and low A with the slide out about an inch, like about there, which is what I want. That'll give me room to go in if it gets cold. We, we have to play outside sometimes where it's cold. So uh, I have made, I have cut new inner legs of the right length, and I have made one of my outer legs right here of the right length. I will simply slip these over, and since I'm still experimenting, what I will do is make the outer slide legs soldered to the crook with the brace, and the inner slide legs will just be sleeves that will be tighter on here than they are. These will be the looser ones, so I can pull it out as a unit. When I'm satisfied with it, I can run a little solder in there and make it permanent. But I made it permanent the first time, and that was not the right thing to do, so we're not going to do that again. Now, I need to cut one of these tubes here to four, I measured it out, four and a half, four and three quarters inches I think is what I did. Let me double check. And it is indeed four and three quarters inch. Now I'm going to measure that here and make a mark with my little trusty sharpie. I'm cutting off the part I'm holding. I just trimmed this end and dressed it so it would be flat. And you were wondering about that specifically, so I'm going to show you how I did that now with just regular house tools. I mark here. I put the mark on the side I'm going to cut off, which is the lower half. If you look, the mark is just, just below the line. The tape that I'm going to mark it with is going to go where the line is, at the top of the red ink. It has to be that precise or you end up with a gap of about a half a millimeter to a millimeter, and that looks unsightly. Now I'm going to take my tape, try and not pull it off so that it gets twisted. You want the edge to be straight. You have to have a very, very good sense of things like parallel and perpendicular and all that. And I'm going to place the tape at the bottom of this mark. Oh no, that's the end I'm cutting off. I'll place the tape on this side. Sorry, glad I think about it twice before I do it. Measure twice, cut once. Now I'm doing this, trying to make it look exactly 90 degrees, and then walking it around tightly, stretching it, and slowly trying to make it look like it's flat all the way around. And if I do this correctly, when I come around, it will line up exactly with the other end of the tape, just like that. It takes practice to do that. Now I don't know if it's perfect or not, but I can look at it pretty well along the site and spin it and you can see that's a pretty straight tape. It's not perfect but it's pretty good. I'll fix what's not right as best I can when I'm done. I'm in a hurry because I have to take this thing to rehearsal in about an hour and a half. I have to start getting ready for work. So just because I'm old, I'm going to mark the edge with red so I can see it better when I'm cutting. This is the piece I'm keeping. The tape goes on the piece you're keeping. You cut off the other end. If you're cutting off a little nib, it's easy to just put the Dremel on there and walk around straight like this. But when you're cutting off something like this, you have to go in little chunks very carefully. And I'll show you that in a second. Let me double check that I measured this exactly right, four and three quarter inches. And it is pretty much spot on. It's a little bit off. Let's see. It's off, as you can see, by about a quarter of a millimeter. That's good because I have to spile it at the end. So. That'll get ground off. All right. You bring over here and just look over my shoulder. And my Dremel, I'm going to walk it around this tape line very carefully. I'm only making a trough. I'm not going all the way through. I'm getting, it's windy and I'm getting 
fragments in my face. So I want to put on my safety gear, which you should always do anyway. Don't be stupid like I was trying to make this film. I forgot about that. Mask, safety goggles. Now I don't feel like such an idiot. I was gonna mark that red line, changed my mind. Now I can break through. About an eighth of an inch at a time. Take a saxophone file for saxophone key cups, very wide, perfect for tuba tubing. To dress the end, I remove the tape. Now you don't have these, but you can get this kind of stuff at Home Depot, some kind of stuff for cleaning soldering. Uh, I don't have tube dressers, so uh, I use a triangular solder scraper, and I set it inside the tube, cant it slightly out. Scrape all that garbage off. The outside will also have mushroomed out a little bit. It'll have a little ridge you can feel. If that's the inside tube, it won't go in if it's there, so you always need to remove that. So I set this down at a very low angle like this, press kind of hard, and walk it around once or twice, three, four times, until you feel it gone. There, that's clean. Now, the inside and outside are more or less clean. I want to make sure that it's flat. It's not perfectly flat. I set it against this file like this, and I twist the two like this. The problem is the high spot will pivot like that, and all you're doing is making it more crooked. You have to feel where the high spot is and dig into that and twist it like a wheel rotating, like that. If you allow it to do this and walk around, it won't, it won't file it flat. So you have to put a lot of pressure flat, and do it real slow until it wants to turn evenly like that, it's starting to free up. When you're done, it should just turn without walking like that. This is not quite ready. I will also sometimes, if it's the inner tube, I will use the outer tube as a guide. But I don't have anything that will fit on the outside of this to use as a guide. So I'm having to eyeball the whole thing. Almost this entire valve section was done using this method of eyeballing the tube cutting. And they all came out pretty good. It's a little crooked. We'll find out. I'm going to put it on the inner tube and put it up against the tube on the horn and see how off it is. Now, one end needs to be as perfect as possible because it butts up against another tube. Are you looking? See? It has to touch this. But the other end goes to the crook. So if one side is flawed and the other is good, just put the good side against the, the slide tube and the bad side against the crook. You won't notice it so much. Get all the trash out of there. Now let's see if I have at least one good joint. Yeah, that's a little crooked, but that might also be the inner tube. Let me take that out. This here, you can see little gaps. That's not real good. It's okay. Let's see if this one's better. That one's much better. That's the one I just made. There's a little bit of wobble. Well, not wobble. There's a little bit of unevenness there, but let's see where that is. there. That needs to come down a little bit. There's a little uneven snaggle tooth part right there. And that's high at an angle around to about there. So I'm going to try to file this edge down a little bit. So I'm going to put it on there and lean where that's from there to there on this side a little bit. It's not going to be perfect. I'm just going to try and knock that down a little bit. And 
and then try to flush it out again. That looks a little more flat. The edge is all torn up, so I definitely got something off. I sound funny with this stupid mask on my face, which I don't need anymore. And there I dropped my tube. Let's hope I didn't trash it. I'm running in a hurry. I have to take this to dress rehearsal for a concert tonight. And I didn't have time to get my practicing in fully and do this, so I'm rushing to get this done. The original tubes were soldered together well enough that I didn't have time to pull them apart. So I'm making this one temporarily. I'll use new tubing for it when I get it all dialed in. For now, I'm using some mixed old tubing. This is a King tube. So is this. This is off of a K90 contrabass bugle. Both of them are. See. That's not the end I'm just working on, stupid. Much better. That's pretty close now. There's a little bit of a gap, but once it's on the horn, it won't matter. Plus, if it's up an inch, no one will know. So, I got this leg. I got this leg. Right there. There's a sleeve inside here of just a plain tube that butts against the end of this slide and the end of this one. So I have to make sure that this bottoms out, which it does, right there. And then this goes on. I'll buff this off when I get a chance. Put my crook back on through here. Put my water key on, and I'm, then I do my brace, make sure everything's lined up right. Then I clean the heck out of it and grease it up, and I go to work at the rehearsal tonight. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this.